We are trying to simplify. Today is the first. So 9 squared minus 72 divided by 6 squared times 7 minus 9. Just make sure that I copied it correctly. Just let's double check. Is that okay? Yes, sir. What do we have to perform first here in order to simplify? Where will you start? The exponent. Very good. So then I will copy and I will replace 9 by 9 squared by 81 minus 72 divided by 36 multiplied by 7 minus 9. Is this okay so far? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Put in practice next door to chapter 4. What will be the next step? Yes. Mm -hmm. Say it again. Nope. Yes. I have to perform the division from left to right. If I had parentheses here, I would have multiplied first. So division and multiplication are step by step from left to right, unless parentheses give pri priority to a particular operation. But there are no parentheses here. So I have to copy 81. I copy this sign. And then 72 divided by 36 is 2. So I have 2 multiplied by 7 minus 9. Which operation is next? Right. So then I have 81 minus 14 minus 9. At this point, when <clears throat> multiplication and division are done, it doesn't matter. I can do whatever I want. And this is what I want to do. Negative 14 and minus 9 is negative 23. And 81 minus 23. I wanted to add first the negative numbers. Do I have to? No. It doesn't matter. You can start from here and jump here. You can start from here and move on to the right. It doesn't matter at this point. So how much is 81 minus 23? Thank you very much. Is this okay? Yes. Good. Other questions? Thank you for your question. <clears throat> Other questions for me? Anything else? Nothing else? Nothing? You encountered nothing in watching the videos, in reading the, the examples in the book, and doing any homework? Um, after each class, starting from tonight or tomorrow morning, I will email you in Canvas what I expect you to do for next time. Although you kind of know, I think I wasn't very clear, as there is a lot of work to do between classes. If you expect to learn this just five minutes before the test, it's not going to happen. Is that clear? So please watch for an email that will come from me either tonight or tomorrow morning. Okay? That says between now and Tuesday you have to do blah, 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 and ask questions. Okay? Good. Is there anything else before we continue with rational equations? Any questions? I thought you wanted to say something? Oh, no, I'm, I'm, I didn't hear that sound. I'm just a little late, that's all. That's okay, no problem. You didn't miss much. We were just looking at a problem okay. and simplify it. Okay, other questions for me? Okay, so let's go continue with 1.2. We have one more item there. <coughs> I remember I owe you a document. Some of you just came in and I didn't get the chance to. Uh, do I owe you two documents or oh, just no, one? I just have a question. I, I okay. No, I wanted to ask any question. Okay. But last time I was short in some documents. I'm not sure. I what gave you everything. Yeah, I gave you everything. Okay. Very good. Yes. Any question? Anything? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, kind of yes. It was, uh, and this I, this I is what I want to hear. This uh, is what I want to hear. Uh, it's parentheses, uh, x, y. Can I copy it? So yeah. you don't have to. Awesome. So you copied it? Right there. Very good. So it's um, x, y to negative 2 and everything to negative 4. Mm -hmm. And x to negative 2, y, everything to negative 5. 
good. So now I know what to expect. So you can you can dictate again. So this is x squared y, I think, raised to negative 4. Is, is x, x, y, negative, negative, x, uh, y, is, is the negative 2 after the x and y. Here. So that's negative 4. Here it's 4? No, uh, you're on the outside. Here you go. <laughs> Here you go. My fault, my fault, my fault, my fault. Sorry, sorry. Because you had I, I I was just I wasn't I wasn't recording no I wasn't showing off I'm sorry I was just I just wanted to know what to expect but I wasn't recording really okay thank you very good it's a very good question so let me copy it one more time because this is not clear. So x, y to negative 2, everything to negative 4, everything divided by x to negative 2, y raised to negative 5. Very good question. If you get the chance to watch the videos from last semester, this is where we started. We started with exponential rules and so on and so forth. Okay. So what do I do here? What do you suggest? What is the idea? We are trying to simplify this expression. But where will you start? I'm, I'm erasing this because, uh, as you know, I post this. So I just want to make sure that I'm not confusing you. So where will you start? Yes, but you cannot multiply because these two are different factors. And you cannot multiply here for the same reason. Can you Absolutely. If that's what you meant, yes. Sorry about that. Yes. So I copy the base. The exponent is 1, and I have to multiply by negative 4. Agreed? Good. And then I copy y, and then I multiply the exponents, and I get? Perfect. Then I copy the base again, and yes, I have 10. And then I copy the base again, and I have awesome. In the next step, I will divide, because I have x and x, y and y. So I will copy the base for x, and then what happens to the exponents? So from the exponent of the numerator, I do what? Subtract the exponent of the denominator. So negative 4 minus 10. Negative 4. Oh, no. So I, I get $4 from you, and then I beg for 10 more. So now I owe you 14 right. Is it negative 4 minus 2? Negative 4. I owe you $4, oh, yeah. and I come back and say, please right. give me 10 more. 18. And now I owe you 14 14 Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Good. So multiply by y. 8, eight subtract negative 5. Uh, yes, it is 13, right? 8 minus negative 5 will become 8 plus 5. Mm -hmm. Now, if you remember, uh, every time we have an, a base raised to a negative exponent, we have a to negative n, which is 1 over a to the nth power. So I have to write this expression bringing x to negative 14 to the denominator. y to the 13th does not change, does not go anywhere, because it has a positive exponent. And this is fully simplified. There is nothing else we can do here. Any questions? Is there anything else? Is there anything else? Is the bottom answer? I was just giving the property. This is the property that we have to use when um, a base has a negative exponent. So this is just the property. This is the property I used to bring x to negative 14 to the denominator. Yes. Yes. So this is just a notation. Uh, 1 over a to the nth power can be denoted by a to negative n. It doesn't mean that the, the final answer is negative. It only means that it's, it represents a fraction. When the, the exponent is negative, that it gets changed into a fraction. That's all it means. Any questions? 
So we are still talking about um, 1.2. I'm just looking for my handout to show you. Okay. So this was completed, and I was hoping you would by now, okay, maybe I wasn't clear, so that's why I want to put everything in an email to you after each class to make sure that everyone knows where we are, what we're doing. So we are still in this section. We have to talk about rational equations, and then we'll move on to 1.5. So I'm expecting you between now and Tuesday to finish all homework from these three sections, all these problems, Study again what we did in class, redo the problems we did in class, everything from these three sections. And I would put that in writing, yes. I don't collect homework unless you want me to look at something. And if you remember, every time you encounter something new, just write it down. This is for you to do after you study, before you start the homework. To check your understanding. Okay, but that's for us. That's for you. And I, I'm expecting you to come back, don't forget your thought. Um, I'm expecting you to come back and say, since you don't have enough time in class to show us all types of problems, I mean, I had just encountered this particular type, you did not show it in class, show me. Because I'm not sure about it. Okay, so this is what I would do. I would, again, this is for faculty. So I'm giving you this because I want you to understand that this is the minimum, minimum that you have to know coming out of this class. So after you do this and check the answer in the back, you will conclude, oh, I got it. I can do my homework and it will take a snap. I'm exaggerating. But it will not take me three hours, and I will not have to refer back to the book every five minutes or for every problem and so on and so forth. Because I studied. I redid the problems that we did in class. Um, I understood how to do them. And now I checked myself with this. I checked the answer in the back. I'm good. OK? It's a lot of work. It's a lot of time. Sorry. Okay. Um, so what if you don't plan on getting the book? Do we have access to those questions online? All you have, have to do is I showed last time. I thought I did, but maybe I didn't. Okay. Correct me if I didn't. You put it in the corner, page 120. It will take you exactly oh, okay. to... So basically, I have it online. Yes. Okay, that was Under multimedia question. library. Gotcha. You open, you go to the section, to the chapter section, click on select all. Do you want me to show that again? No, no, no. I just wasn't sure. Okay. Was but does everyone remember? how to go there. Okay, so once you go to Canvas and you click on My Labs and Mastering, it'll take you to, and then on the left, in the left column, you have Multimedia Library. Click on it, it will open up, and you select whatever you want, chapter section, and once you get anywhere, you can put the page number in okay. at the corner. And then my next question is, when you do the homework online, um, like, do you have an option of going back if you do get it wrong to correct it? Or is it like, if once you do the homework and you get like two out of five on your homework, is that like the grade that they're getting? Or do you have that option to go back? That's a very good question. Um, the course in my, my labs and mastering was not made by me. Okay. So in order to answer your question, I have to go back and look. Okay. Because you're just saying to like do that. So I just don't want to like go in there and try to do the homework. And I think you have more than one attempt. Yeah, yeah, I think you do. But I don't want to say a number and then I come back and say, I'm sorry, I apologize. I so I have to go and look. Okay. I'm on the I'm on the calculus committee, not on an algebra committee. So I, this is what they the subgroup of faculty, uh, full time professors. I'm I'm full time on the cal uh, calculus committee, so I don't know how they selected the problems, but everyone has to follow this and the selection that they made in my labs plus is based on this okay so that's why i wanted you to see it because i'm trying to follow this okay once we finish this then i can branch off to other things but since we are so condensed in 13 weeks now instead of 15 weeks i'm not sure how mu how much i can branch off sorry Oh, I was saying, I think the homework says unlimited attempts. Okay. Okay. A lot of this stuff says okay. 
Uh, Thank you. But the other question is, so there's a lot of work in that my lab stuff. So this is optional, right? If you don't, if you don't do this before you do the MyLabs Plus, it will take you a tremendous amount of time. You will have to go back to the book millions of times, and you are not going to comprehend and retain the information. That's the downfall with MyLabs Plus. Just punching in numbers in there and coming up with a it's not, it's not everything. Once you check your understanding with this, and, and then you are confident, then you will not take hours and hours and hours of work. You will be prepared. This is so I would recommend this as much as you can. If there are 10 <laughs> problems that are the same, do three of them. So Without preparation, just my, ma my, labs, my, lab, my math lab is not going to be enough. The preparation in class, that what we do in class, with the problems that we do in class, and this is the basis. And then you can do homework and quizzes and preps and so on and so forth in my labs plus. Okay. If you enter something a little wrong, like, a, I don't know, you put a comma instead of a point, send me an email and I'll correct it. And you don't get the point for that problem. Okay? Other questions? Very good. Other questions? Yes? Can you copy that? Yeah. You didn't get anything? You no, are... I, got a, I just didn't get that one from this video. Oh. What was I was saying? So this is, I don't know, I think you don't have both. Probably both. I'm not sure. Okay. So um, we are going back to rational equations, which we have not looked at yet. We are still in 1.2, so I'm going to select a, a rational equation. Uh, let's say 48. So we are still in 1.2, 48 on page 120. And that is 4 divided by x plus 5 plus 2 divided by x minus 5, I'll correct that in a second, equals... 32 divided by x squared minus 25. There's no y in there. I just, for some reason, I put it by mistake. I already said what type of equation is it. So can anyone tell us again what type of equation is this? Yes, because it has x in the denominator. This is a rational equation because it has x in the denominator. There are a few things that we worry about when we, at least one thing that I was going to say, we worry about uh, when we deal with fractions is what? No. Say it again. Exactly. So division, thank you. By zero is actually does not exist, but we like to use a fancy word. Undefined, thank you. Division by zero is undefined, which really means it doesn't exist. I don't have a number. So if you say um, 10 divided by 2, I'll say 5. Uh, if you say 0 divided by 3, I'll say 0. But if you ask me how much is 5 over 0, I'll say I have no number. I have no number or no answer. It doesn't exist. There is no such thing. Okay, so coming back to our equation, I'm going to copy it again. What will make the first denominator 0? What value of x will make the first denominator 0? Negative 5. Perfect. So obviously, x cannot be negative 5, because otherwise, the first denominator will be 0. Awesome. Uh, what other value, what value will make the de first, second denominator 0? 
Exactly. So x cannot be 5. So these are so-called restrictions on x. x cannot be anything. In this equation, if the equation has solutions, the solution or solutions cannot be negative 5 or 5. Is that clear why? Yes, everyone? Yes? Yes. Oh, good. Perfect. So now I recommend the following step. Back through this and move this term to the other side. <coughs> so 4 divided by x plus 5 plus 2 divided by x minus 5. And every time I need this, I will raise it and say we have an agreement. And you will see how important this is. I'm going to raise it all the time. So when I move a term from one side to the other, I had 32 over blah, blah, blah. I'm going to move it to the other side. What happens? Very good. Good. What is left? An equation has to have two sides and an equal symbol. So when I move this term, exactly, thank you. So what is left? What do I have in parent? I'm sorry, in uh, under 32. Wonderful. Awesome. Thank you very much. Good. The next step would be to find the least common denominator. I want to caution you here for um, a moment and say this. This is the method I like to, write, to present, which I think it makes sense. And I think it's easy to understand. However, as I mentioned on the first day of classes, you may say, no, I'm not going to do this. I have my own method that works for me. I'm fine. Okay. Whatever works for you works for me. Good. So can anyone give us the least common denominator? Notice, I drew a long fraction line, I copied the equal symbol, and I put the zero. Because if I forget this, I will change it into an expression, I will never solve for anything. Okay. So what is the least common denominator here? The least common denominator. Oh, the So one more time, what is it? I think I heard it a couple of times, but then I wasn't sure. X plus five squared. Is it X plus five squared. X minus five. Okay, we have to talk about this. So, correct. I think that's what I said. I heard it. I heard it, but uh, over someone who said it, and I, I know you said it, over you there was something else, and I was, I was going to, I wanted to wait. But yes, I heard it, as I said. I did hear it. Okay, so how do we determine the least common denominator, for those of you who don't remember? So, for example, if I have 1 half plus 1 third, how do I determine the least common denominator? 2 and 3 have no common factors. 2 is 2, 3 and 3, and then the least common denominator has to have all different factors we see here. So that's 6. So this is a factor, and this is another factor. They have nothing in common, and like 2 and 3. So that's why the denominator is 6. When two factors or two denominators have nothing in common, the least common denominator must be the product of the two. Then two, com two times what is six? The answer is three. So I will be multiplying the numerator as well by three. Three times what is six? So then I multiply the denominator by two, I will have to multiply the numerator by two. So then the simplified or whatever I have to write here is three times one plus two times one. So the answer is five sixths. Is that clear? Yes, everyone? OK, perfect. So that's exactly what I'm going to do now for this. x plus 5 was multiplied by? Good. So the numerator has to be multiplied by x minus 5. This is not a fraction line. This is just a reminder. It tells me, look, you took the liberty of multiplying x plus 5 by x minus 5. You have to do the same thing to the top. Otherwise, you change the fraction. 
x minus 5 that was multiplied by? x plus 5. So that's why needs this, the numerator needs as an x plus 5 as well. And what about 32? Say it again. Nothing. Nothing. Very good. Nothing means 1. I agree. It doesn't mean anything because it has the same denominator. Are you with me, everyone? Okay, perfect. So now, this will be a terrible mistake. Do not write it. I'm going to erase it. Not erase it, I'm just going to cross it out because it's too much. Is this clear? Why this is a terrible mistake? Because you have to multiply the 4 by x minus 5 and the 2 by x plus 5. That's what we just discussed. I multiply the denominator by x minus 5, I have to multiply the numerator by x minus 5. That's why this would be terrible to write. Clear? OK, perfect. It's like writing here 1 plus 1 instead of 3 plus 2. Same thing. Good, so I'm coming back. I'm going to write it again. So can anyone dictate now? 4x minus 20. 4x <coughs> minus 20 plus 22x very good minus 32 do we all understand these steps any questions now let me just say the following some students may write this Right? Is, is anything wrong here? No. No. But this is the re here's the reason why I don't write this. And I'm going to cross it out. <coughs> How tempting, here's a question for you. How tempting is this? Is it tempting? Right. That's the reason why I don't write it. It's the same thing. But it's already multiplied. 4 times x, 4 times negative 5, 2 times x, 2 times 5, negative 32. But if I write it like this, potentially some of you may, I'm not saying you will, I'm saying potentially may try to simplify. What is wrong with this? This is not a factor at the top, so you cannot simplify it. We only simplify factors, right? So let's write that note. Note, we simplify. Factors, comma, not terms, and not pieces from a term with a factor. So these two are factors, but this one is not a factor in the numerator. Yes? So I did that to get to the next step. Yes, but you so didn't You didn't simplify, so you're fine. Okay, so if I did that on the test, it wouldn't be a wrong. No, I just said it's wrong. It's perfect. It's not wrong at all. It's perfect. But... But it is tempting for some to do this, and that will be a zero. Yeah. Yes? Right. Right. So that's why I don't write it. But if you write it and you know what you're doing, I'm fine. Okay? No cell phones, please. <coughs> okay, now we combine like terms, 6x. So here's what I like to do. Negative 32 minus 20 is negative 52. Negative 52 plus 10 is negative 42. Over x plus 5, x minus 5 divide, equals 0. Do you allow me to write 5 as 5 over 1? Would you allow me to write 5 as 5 over 1? Will you allow me to write negative 3 as negative 3 over 1? Then you will allow me to write 0 as 0 over 1. 0 is another number, like any other. Correct? Good. So I'm going to write 0 over 1, and I'll show you in a minute why. Now, this is what type of equation? Of course, but this is a special type of rational. Awesome. It's still a rational equation, but it's a special type, and it has a special name. Anyone remembers the name of this? 
which is a fraction on one side of the equal symbol and another fraction on the other side of the equal symbol. That's what we have, a fraction and a fraction, the equal symbol in between. How is this called, as well as this? Keyword for our notebook. Proportion. What can I do in a proportion and in nothing else? Only in a proportion. There's something, an operation, or something I can do, but only in a proportion. What is it? Exactly. Only in a proportion I can cross multiply. If this is true, A times D equals B times C for sure. So then what do you think I'm going to do with this? I am going to, of course, of course, yes, because I have zero here, and I, and I wrote it as zero over one, just to show a proportion, like with any other number. I can put any number over one. But would that have been the final answer? Yeah. No. Oh, so we're still, we haven't got to the final No, answer. we have not. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Can anyone give me the next step? We are cross multiplying. What should I write? That's one way of putting it. Yes. Times one equals zero. Yes. Of course, there is another way. You can say a fraction is zero only when the top is zero, and that's what you get. A fraction is zero only when the top is zero. Fraction is undefined when the bottom is zero. So then, what type of equation is this now? Of course, the easiest, easiest possible. What do I do? How do I solve this? There is only one way for linear. I have to separate the terms. I'm moving this to the other side. 6x equals 42 was negative on one side is positive on the other. Finally, x equals 7. My first thought and concern is this. Is 7 on this list? No. That's how we solve rational equations. Any questions for me? Again, one example is not enough, as you know. So I'm expecting you to practice as much as possible. Come back and say, show me this, show me that. I didn't get the answer. We have time. We'll do more. Any questions? Uh, 1.5 quadratic equations. Can anyone give us an example of a quadratic equation? Okay. This is the general form of a quadratic equation where a, b, and c are real numbers. And I claim that a cannot be 0. Why? I have a claim, and I want you to explain why. Wouldn't it be a linear equation, then? Absolutely. Thank you. So if a is 0, this term disappears. This is no longer quadratic. Awesome. b and c can be anything, though. Good. We have four methods of solving quadratic equations. And you can say, really? Do I really need all four? The answer is yes and no. And I will say yes to the ones we need, and I will say no to the one we don't. And I'll explain why I claim that in just one second. 
here are the four methods. Number one, factoring. Number two, taking square roots. Number three, completing the square. And number four, quadratic formula. Factoring, taking square roots, completing the square, and quadratic formula. These three are extremely useful. <coughs> this one alone cannot solve the equation. <clears throat> I'll show you in a minute the all four methods. So when we complete the square, then we have to come back and employ, employ use taking square roots. Complete the square alone does not solve the equation. Then why? Why would I even list it here? Why is it even listed in the book? For other purposes that come into play later. It's for conic sections and other things, for circles and hyperbolas and other. So we will learn it now. We will combine it with taking square roots. But if you ask me, when do I use what? I will say complete the square never in solving quadratic equations. Unless you say, this is the quadratic equation. You must solve it by completing the square. And then I have no choice. And I'll have to use completing the square. Other, otherwise, if you give me a, qu a quadratic equation to solve, I will never, ever apply this. Okay. Then what do I apply? I will apply factoring if it takes this much. Or this long, I should say. In a blink. If I can factor it quickly, I factor it. This is not always applicable. Not all polynomials are factorable. So then when I apply this in a specific situation that I'll talk about in a minute. So taking square roots is extremely useful, but it's only applicable in special, special situations. Quadratic formula always works. So this, always, this, is, this does not only uh, always work because not all polynomials are factorable. This always works. This always works. I can always complete the square. And then once I complete the square, I can always apply taking square roots. So the only one that does not always work is this one. The one that we should not use because it's too long and it's really not useful is this one. OK, so let's go back to the factoring uh, supplement that I gave you last time, which is this one. And this is extremely important. Yes, I know. Everything is extremely important to me. I know. Um, in, in all my classes. So this is the strategy that I came up with. Uh, this is my document. This is my document. So when we factor a polynomial, first we have to arrange it in descending order. Secondly, we have to factor out the greatest common factor. And then the negative leading coefficient. Now, these two can go together. So you can factor out the greatest common factor at the same time with the negative leading coefficient. Then from here, there are three possibilities. You either factor a binomial, and we have to follow these special products, or a trinomial, and you have to factor these two special products and two possibilities, or the easiest of all is polynomials. That's why these two are here. And this one is here. That's why th these are so useful. And already today, I think I raised it at least once as our agreement. So then let's start with solving by factoring to refresh your memory. So these are equations right here. Except this one, this is not quadratic because it has degree 3. You can choose anything you want or we'll choose together if you want. 
these are higher higher degree polynomials and um, this is the handout that I go through in the prerequisite course from the beginning till the end. If there is something you see that you would like to go back to, I'll be more than happy to uh, solve it with you. But for now, I would like to choose two problems so we can move on to the other methods. So we are reviewing a little bit of factor. So I don't know. Let's say we are going with B and C. OK? Do we all have this handout? Everyone? OK, perfect. So factoring. So it's x squared equals 100. So what do I do first here? Say it again. Yes, we are moving 100. Yes, so x squared minus 100 equals 0. Is that what you meant? We are not taking square roots yet, if that's what you were thinking about. Yes, I'm going to get back to that in a minute. So we subtract 100 from both sides. I have to have 0 on one side. Every time we solve a quadratic equation by factoring, we must have 0 on one side. OK, what next? Squaring. No, we're not, take, we're not squaring. We have an agreement. Which of these three? Yes, of course. This is the difference of squares. So let's factor. Only if 50 times 50 is 100. X. Yeah. That's okay. 